Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to ask Mark Hyden to come up here with me from R Street. He has worked hard on this bill. Um, this is a if you will, we'll pull the mic, mic over in front of you. Sir. Senate Bill 92, there's a bill in the House that is the exact bill. This is a companion bill, word for word, of a bill, I believe it's House Bill 42, that just was voted out of committee, I guess, yesterday. Um, basically, what this bill does, it deals with uh, people that are behind on their uh, loans or in default of their loans. They get their license suspended or can't get a license for the job that they went to school for. I mean, and I think if you really look at lines 28, if you just look, let's just look at lines 28 through 34, that's what this bill is all about. And I'll just quickly read these this, these lines here. Where an applicant or licensee has been has been found to be a borrow, borrower in default under the Georgia Higher Education Loan Program as determined by the Georgia Higher Education Assistance Corporation or has been certified by any entity of the federal government for non-payment or default or breach of a uh, repayment or service obligation <coughs> under any federal education loan, loan repayment or service conditional scholarship program. Such action shall not be sufficient grounds for refusal of a license or suspension of a license. Look, I'm not promoting that you don't pay, repay your loans in any way, shape, or form. We shouldn't be defaulting on loans. You should pay your loans. But common sense tells me if you can't get a job and you can't get a license, you are going to get further and further behind on the loan, and you're not going to be able to provide for your family. So it makes sense to me that they should be able to work and have their license and continue to work out a way to pay uh, pay their loans back and I think that's what this this bill does and I'll ask Mr. Hayden if you've got any comments on it on that bit on sure uh, chairman and members of the committee I, I really appreciate this opportunity uh, my name is Mark Hyden I'm a Georgia resident and I'm the director of state government affairs at the R Street Institute which is a free market think tank that promotes limited effective government in many areas including occupational licensing and that's why Senate Bill 92 is of special interest to us um, this bill, it, it, this issue is, is fairly unique. Um, Georgia is one of only 15 states that's empowered to suspend the occupational licenses of individuals who fall behind on their student loans. But other states have been increasingly repealing this power and replacing it with something better, and for good reason. Uh, when occupational licenses are suspended, uh, licensees are prohibited from working in their profession, which just makes it uh, difficult for them to repay their debts. So this policy essentially creates joblessness uh, and subsequently uh, pushes those newly un unemployed individuals into poverty, which harms their families and makes it much more likely that they will apply for taxpayer-funded assistance. So this government-created uh, poverty harms more than just those that are in default and their families. It can actually increase the tax burden on working Georgians. Now, the original intent of this law was to hold borrowers accountable uh, and to prevent defaults, but it's even failed on that front. As of 2015, the average federal loan student default rate in Georgia was actually higher than in states without revocation authority. So the threat of suspension doesn't really appear to be effective at discouraging defaults. And I'll echo uh, uh, what the chairman said here is uh, we, we believe that it's important to encourage debt repayment but we need to do it responsibly. And fortunately, we already have the tools at our disposal to do this. The federal government can garnish wages, seize tax returns, social security payments, and even assess liens against property. Uh, the bottom line, at least for us at R Street, is that we don't believe that Georgia should be in the business of creating poverty or needlessly increasing the burden on taxpayers by forcing defaulters uh, into unemployment. And that's why a coalition of organizations have come together and signed a statement, uh, organizations including R Street, FreedomWorks, the Georgia Center for Opportunity, Georgia Watch, NFIB Georgia, and many others have signed on to this stating that the current policy is counterproductive. So uh, instead of maintaining the status quo, uh, we, should, we believe that we should use the smarter mechanisms that are already in place. And for us at R Street, that's why we believe it's critical that we pass Senate Bill 92. And it's uh, also got another letter from Opportunity Solutions Project. The, the last thing I would say, Mr. Chairman, is that it, we're at about 11 percent, I believe, in defaults. Uh, in about 16,000 loans are in default right now, from what I've been told. Um, and, and again, we want to encourage those to be repaid, but we want those people working to repay them um, and get them paid back. This passed out of committee yesterday in the House, 
and it passed in the state of Arkansas 165 to nothing uh, when they had it on the, the floor of the Senate, uh, House in Arkansas. So the other states are looking at this to make sure. And let, let me tell you, uh, student loan debt's out of control, and uh, it really is. And But I, I think by punishing people, not giving them their license to not be able to work is probably not the answer to, to getting it repaid. So uh, I'll answer any questions. And thank you for allowing me to, to have a hearing today. Let me ask one question. Uh, clarify for me, there are sufficient civil remedies to collect these loans other than with withholding of licensure. Yes, correct? sir. Are they lacking in any way in the state of Georgia to provide a sufficient remedy to collect? No, sir. I see some people pushing buttons, but I, my lights aren't lighting up. Oh, really? Uh, I think uh, Senator Strickland, I think you were first, Senator Harrell, then Senator Orr. Are you number eight? I'm number eight. Okay. <coughs> and I have a drafting question. It's, and Did you work on the bill? Right. That's perfect. How do you do the, the only question I have is just in looking at Section 1, and I didn't go through the whole thing, and in Section 5, it says you shall not suspend the license if someone basically is in default. But the other sections say that can't be the basis for a suspension. I know it's not your intent to make it where someone's in default. There can be another basis for a suspension. Maybe we can just look at the drafting, make sure we don't need to have other language that says that can't be the basis for someone not getting the license. Does okay. that make sense what I'm saying? If you look at section one, it says you shall not suspend someone that's basically in default. The other sections say it shall not be sufficient grounds for suspension. And what section is that? <coughs> uh, section 2 that you pointed out, like on line 33. The oh, same thing shall on not line be, 48. Yeah. yeah, I got you. So like we can talk, 49. This yeah. is a hearing only, is that right, Mr. Chairman? It is. We can chat more about it offline. It was just a okay. question on the drafting. Well, we uh, certainly don't want to create a situation where for other reasons they could not be suspended and happen to be concurrently in default on their student loan. Right. So I mean, if you say they shall not be suspended, if they're in default, then uh, I hope you see what I'm getting at. There may be other sufficient reasons for suspension. Okay. This doesn't need to be an additional uh, defense. Senator Harrell, what number are you? Three? Three. Okay. So this is a fairly long bill, actually, with 18 sections. I see from the summary that each um, it says agency is a separate section. Yeah, um, that's that's why it's so long. As you got all these occupations, right. you know, forestry and pharmacists right. and accountants and so right. on. Right. So in glancing over those occupations, um, I'm seeing some that are maybe missing, um, and I'm wondering uh, about like how was it chosen? Who would be included and who would not be included? Uh, if I may, um, yeah. we've, we worked very closely with Legislative Council on this, and the same question came up in uh, the House hearing uh, just the other day. So we had to do a, a deep dive on the code, and there were only a few specific instances in which this was applied to a specific uh, occupation, like a pesticide contractor. All the others were um, fell under, if you can give me a moment, fell under Section 6 as well, yes, um, as well as section 11 and everything below uh, that covers all other occupations so uh, we had to be as thorough to make sure that we address the individual occupations as well as the general uh, the, the broader uh, language but the legislative council assured us that this covers every single occupation <laughs> okay thank you senator or thank you i've had a couple of or maybe three questions uh, for the author and the expert testimony um, I, I, I just wanted to clarify, you said student loan defaults are out of control. I think student loan rates are out well, of that, control. Well, that's what I meant. Stu what, not, 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 uh, let me clarify that. I think we're, these students are taking on too much debt mm -hmm. in our country. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, not that they're not paying them back. I mean, I just think a lot of these kids are graduating and they're saddled with, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollar $60,000 loans, and they're, they're going to pay them back. I mean, but, but it's, it is... Well, I think it's I think it's really being identified as a it's a detriment to the economy to have higher education be so costly 
that that it's routine now to go and take on massive debt. And they say some people, some of these younger people have taken will be uh, paying it off out of their Social Security check. It's actually the debt is that onerous and that long. So, so that, I that's mean, what I, I meant, I, Senator. And I, I didn't. And I, didn't I did mean amen to you, thinking that's what yeah. you meant. And then I thought, wait a minute. Neither one of us were maybe saying exactly what we meant, but yes, I hope that we can 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 uh, see some reversals of this pretty dangerous trend uh, uh, going forward. And I, I I applaud this. I was trying to remember the year that this was put into the Georgia Code. Uh, it was two different bills, 1998 and 2001. Mm -hmm. I hope I voted against them. Uh, but we checked that you voted for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember when Nala's came about, and it's it was in the era of some kind of punitive, uh, you know, maybe dig a hole and bury them while we're at it, but certainly yank their licenses. So this is uh, a, a very good measure that uh, I will be happy to support. Do you have any further questions? I thought you had three. Who's counting when you're having fun? I am. <laughs> I don't want to miss you, Senator. I don't want to miss don't, a gem. Don't egg me on, Mr. Chairman. I don't want to miss a gem of that with Any other questions for the committee? As advertised, both these bills uh, are to be held. They will be perfected, and we will bring them back at the appropriate time. I'll get with time. you, Senator Strickland. And on I appreciate point. your attendance.